President Trump says faith is central to American life and liberty. And above all else, we know this. In America, we don't worship government, we worship God. It was Donald Trump God's chosen candidate? Yes. Mm -hmm. In I what way? He was. Well, first of all, he loves the Lord. I mean, he's been the most the pro, most pro-Christian president that we've had in a long time. He moved the um, embassy to J Jerusalem. I mean, he's just an amazing man, and he loves our Father. He doesn't shy away from prayer. He's not ashamed of prayer, and he's not ashamed to stand up for the Lord and say his name in the Oval Office. So I just, I love him. He's just a ma magnificent man, and I pray for him every day. Trump enjoys strong support from evangelical Christians who helped power him to the White House. If you're Catholic, why would you vote for a Democrat? What they're doing to Catholics? I don't know what's going on with the Catholics but they're really being persecuted. Why would you vote for Biden and why would you vote for a Democrat? A new report from the House Judiciary Committee proves that the Biden FBI actually targeted Catholics as potential domestic terrorists. Do you believe this? And you know, uh, evangelicals will not be far behind. So that didn't actually happen. So that didn't actually happen. And Donald Trump basically accusing the Biden administration last month of targeting Catholics for religious persecution and warning that evangelicals will be next. Well, they're trying to put informants in the parish, in the church. That's what this memorandum said, Director, from one of your field offices. So that didn't actually happen. Whistleblower has come forward and told the House under oath that the FBI went and interviewed priests and choir directors so that didn't actually happen. FBI Question. that did this. It was your FBI that was sending, and we have the memos, we have the emails, we're sending undercover agents into Catholic churches. Both. So that didn't actually happen. Oh, the FBI targeting and monitoring Catholics. So that didn't actually happen. Director Christopher Ray lied in his testimony about the Bureau targeting Catholics. Wednesday, the House Judiciary Committee stated it obtained a document by subpoena that reveals that the FBI Richmond Field Office coordinated with multiple field offices across the country to produce a memo targeting traditional Catholics as domestic terrorists. The FBI tried to manufacture crimes against sincere Catholics. The FBI's Richmond Field Office recently published an internal document promising to punish, quote, radical traditionalist Catholics and their ideology. So that didn't actually happen. The Bill of Rights prohibits the government from weighing in on sectarian or religious questions. They don't get to decide whether your religion is good or bad. They have to be agnostic on it. A new report from the House Judiciary Committee proves that the Biden FBI actually targeted Catholics as potential domestic terrorists. So that didn't actually happen. Donald Trump basically accusing the Biden administration last month of targeting Catholics for religious persecution. The recent leaked FBI memo on the targeting of Catholics represents an outrageous escalation in the weaponization of the federal government against religious believers. Further, the growing pattern of hostility toward Catholics by the Biden administration because he's following the radical left agenda. Take away your guns, destroy your Second Amendment, no religion, no anything, hurt the Bible, hurt God. He's against God, he's against guns. There's a, there's a small culture within the FBI that is out there actively moving against Christians because they're actively moving against conservatives. Donald Trump's a guy who, when asked in 2016, have you ever asked God for forgiveness? He goes, no, I have no need to. And actually, he's been really misrepresented by the media. Comments were completely misrepresented. If you haven't read the actual transcript, completely misrepresented. They don't know about the Bible. I've talked to a lot of them. They're just completely ignorant about the Bible. They said, grew up reading the Bible, maybe a backslidden Baptist, but I still know the Bible. By the way, his third wife is sitting next to him with whom he committed adultery. Gee. This name, Evangelical Now, it's just a cultural marker. Um, and then you have Trump in the center of this who, you know, we know he doesn't attend church regularly. He doesn't sort of speak the language fluently. But with your other hand at stewardship, we will be able to generate and have generosity.
He has held evangelicals and Christians more broadly up as this persecuted group and that he's standing in the breach defending them. My administration will always support and defend your religious liberty. You know, when I talk to self-identified evangelical voters, which is how pollsters capture all of this, um, a lot of them see Trump for what he is. Um, and, you know, they might say, well, he prays or he sometimes go to church or he's a man of faith. But the most important thing is the way that they see him kind of as a defender of their values and their priorities. I run into Christians all the time say, how can you support President Trump? He's an immoral man, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I always want to ask, oh, yeah, yeah. Who is that one candidate that's perfect? I forgot. What's his name? Oh, yeah, there isn't one. In 16, I think there were some polls that showed that evangelical voters who went to church more were less likely to vote for Donald Trump. Evangelical voters who went to church more were less likely to vote for Donald Trump. I want to go back to something we talked about yesterday, abortion. When I, when I said this on TV a couple months ago, I had a friend call me up going, Joe, that's the gravest of sins. And you, why are you saying that? Here's Joe on MSNBC insinuating that Jesus Christ was pro-abortion. Jesus never once talked about abortion. Never once. It, it was happening back in ancient times. It was happening during his time. If you don't believe me, if that makes you angry, why don't you do something you haven't done in a long time? Open the Bible, open the New Testament, read the red letters. You won't see it there, said the adulterer. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. Probably the reason why Jesus didn't mention abortion is because Jesus predominantly worked among and lived among Jews. Jesus predominantly ministered to Jews. And Jews did not approve of abortion. And Jesus was a Jew and he would have not have approved of abortion either. You have to be some spectacular kind of stupid to think that the reason that Jesus Christ allegedly never talked about ripping a baby from inside of its mother and killing it is because he supported it. Jesus never once talked about abortion. Never once. And it was happening. It's a life. And it's being ended. And Joe Scarborough needs a mental health check after that rant. I've never heard anything so stupid in my life. That was impressive. Impressively stupid. When I said this on TV a couple months ago, I had a friend call me up going, why are you saying that? I was like, dude, read the Bible. It's not there. And yet, they've redefined what it means to be a Christian. And the thing with Trump is like everything's Teflon. Nothing seems to impact him, including it seems with the evangelical community. And I think Trump also has an instinct for that. Yeah, not easy for those evangelicals who aren't Trump supporters. Trump begins his march. This guy now owns the record for the largest margin of victory in the history of contested Iowa Republican caucuses. This isn't a good start. I don't know what is. This is just beautiful. I absolutely love it. I know it's just the very beginning. I mean, we're talking about one primary here. But MAGA is back, baby. He's back with a bang. They impeached this guy Twice they've indicted him, four times they tried to bury him in lawsuits. This is his first primary and he has absolutely won it by a landslide. <laughs> this is one of the, the reasons why I think we love Trump, Liz, is we just love seeing not just what Trump can do, but we love seeing yeah. lefties just lose their minds. Oh, the Trump derangement syndrome. I can't wait for it to reach fever pitch over the coming months mm. up until November. And I cannot wait for this man to win the presidency and come back to the White House because I'm convinced he will. All the polls point in that direction. But more than that, we need this guy to save the world.